everybody, I'm Kate, and welcome to this mini-episode of the 1224 Podcast, where we're still talking to you about everything animation. I'm assuming that you folks, you listeners, are here after listening to um, Shay's mini-podcast episode for um, Window and Wild, as well as Mitchell's vs. the Machines. But if you haven't seen that, feel free to look at that at first, but you do not have to do that. Feel free to also listen to this episode first because either one, it, there's no really, there's not a chronological order for that. So feel free to your listeners content on what you want to do. <laughs> but long story short, we had to put a hiatus to season three um, due to a lot of conflicts with both of us being really busy with college and our commitments to being students. So I really appreciate you all for being so patient with us and bearing with us as we're uh, trying to balance everything and preparing for basically the real world as we're college seniors. <laughs> but these are just mini episodes for you all as a little New Year's gift to give you all as we're starting to uh, come up with a better schedule for the new year. We're going to try out uploading every episode every month just to give us a little more leeway about what it means to post every day while also giving us some kind of structure for that. So yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do for season three. So hopefully you all stay tuned and thanks for sticking with us. We really appreciate all your support and patience. But without further ado, let's just get into my mini episode. Totoro came back, Dad. I saw him. We saw a cat bus too. What? It was huge! With eyes like this! It was great! It was great! <laughs> I saw Totoro! I saw him! I saw him too! <laughs> Just this recently, I finally got to see my neighbor Totoro, which is very surprising, as you all could probably already have, like, your jaws dropping, as this movie, this film, is such a like popular known film as what Studio Ghibli's for. Like when you think of Studio Ghibli, it's just the Totoro <laughs> mascot. As cute as he is, I never really got to see that movie. Believe it or not, it is only the few Studio Ghibli films that I have seen recently. I guess I can just list out some that come to mind that I've already seen. So recently I just saw Howl's Moving Castle, which was amazing. And I've also seen Ponyo, The Secret Life of Arietti, I feel like I would be forgetting one more, but I wouldn't be surprised at is if it's these just these four five ish films that I've seen. Just oh, Spirited Away, of course. I guess everybody has seen Spirited Away as it's also highly critical, uh, acclaimed. So there's that. But my neighbor Totoro was probably was like my next thing to watch. It was like up there in my list, and I was able to watch it for like a movie night for one of the programs that I helped host in my college for my Asian student organization to in celebration of like basically International Education Week. So that was really fun. But I I just really had a fun time with that movie, and it. There, there's a lot to say about this movie because it, I understand why people love that movie. So for folks who want to get a recap of what this film is all about, if you haven't seen it in a while, or if you're just like me and haven't seen it until um, after watching this episode or listening to this episode, it's like I have a camera right in front of me. <laughs> but My Neighbor Totoro is about a family um, consisting of two sisters, Satsuki and Mei, and their dad. They move into rural Japan. Apparently, it takes place post-war Japan, but they move in into a rural place to kind of just, you know, be a little closer to uh, where their mother is, who is sick um, in the hospital, just to, like, you know, be closer to her as she is trying to basically recover from her long illness. So... The movie basically starts out with them, like, moving in and realizing that there are, like, these little tiny, like, suit sprites, as as what they called it. These cute little, like, I don't know. So they're, like, these little round little sprites that just, like, pop out of nowhere. And they have, like, cute little eyes. Um, It's super, 
it's super cute, but, like, they, like, notice it and realize that they live in either, like, a haunted house or more so there are, like, spirits living among them inside the house and outside and around them, which I'll specifically talk about more, like, in the forest that they explore. The movie overall is a very simple premise to it. There aren't, I wouldn't say there aren't stakes, but there are stakes, but they aren't just high as, as you'd see in, in a more magical Studio Ghibli film or any other film you might see in, in America. But there's nothing wrong with that. I think this my Neighbor Totoro is such a good addition to Studio Ghibli's collection just because of how how calming it is. It's very grounded in its environment and it's just very wholesome for what it is. And it's still it's still very like magical and Im- imaginative in that way at the same time. It it just comes to show, oh, this film was made released in 1988, by the way, but it it's super it's super cool to see films that just have less of a level of stakes to them and still is enjoyable. I feel like I guess I the first example that com- kind of comes to mind is Soul, uh the Pixar film where they definitely like uh explore life in a different lens, but like the lesson behind it is, you know, being like present into and enjoying life like in front of you as it is and fake and noticing like the little details that matter and i think i think my neighbor totoro kind of just does that where where they each character just finds enjoyment of the simple life and and just nature around them like nature plays a big role in this film um specifically uh reminding me of like the iconic rain scene right everybody has seen that with the, when, uh, they, the girls, May is the one who figures, who finds Totoro at first. She, like, kind of just is exploring around, and she's, she is the adorable child you've ever met. I, she, she's definitely my favorite (laughs) in this movie, but she's very curious, she's very, she likes to explore a lot, and it comes, it, it literally just shows up immediately when you're introduced to the family. So May, she's like exploring around. She's seeing all these different items. She calls a bucket with a hole a stupid bucket because she's real like that. <laughs> but like, she then eventually finds this like invisible, mate, like transparent mini Totoro. <laughs> and so uh, she follows it because she's like super curious, you know, as most kids are about the world. Like they just have that sense of not obliviousness but like oh what's this what's that and it's just super it's super innocent that way and so she follows it to the forest and eventually finds uh the big the big one (laughs) so to say the totoro the totoro and she basically finds comfort in totoro like she like is like like poking at him it's you see this like big fluff of gray and eventually Totoro reveals himself and then they like kind of introduce each other and like Totoro just roars and (laughs) he's kind of like a Pokemon in that way and and then May just falls asleep to yeah because he's also asleep and sleepy just like me like wow I I feel like everybody just needs a Totoro. Like, I need Totoro. <laughs> um, I... Where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, just a note, like, May's expressions are very, like, frog-like, like, which I like. That relates to her, like, curious, like, personality that she has. And, uh, I guess we can move on to the next character, uh, Satsuki, who is May's older sister. She definitely plays that role, as I definitely relate to her because I am also a older sister, trying to be responsible of everyone in the family, especially especially being not not like a single parent, like in, because they the mom and dad in this film they're still together. It's just the mom's away, but I also understand. 
you know, in that way, being an older sister for a single parent family is kind of relatable in that way. So, yeah, she basically is more mature than me, but she's still she's still very young at heart. I mean, she's like only like five years apart from her, I would assume, since May is like five. And then the dad, he's just he's just there for the ride, which I really love. We don't get to see a lot of supportive, loving dads in media, I don't think. And I think it's just really nice to see that. Also, just like seeing like a two sister sibling dynamic is really cool to see. I'm trying to think about like other dynamics like that, but I don't think I've have. I think I've only seen like brothers in that way, having that like super fun dynamic that's enjoyable. But there's it, there's just a nice, awesome like family a uh, wholesome family that you see in in this film which i really love and the dad specifically is just very supportive of the two like i don't he doesn't be- belittle them i don't know what's i kind of like just read this review but he he doesn't i like that he uh just doesn't dismiss the uh his daughter's like what's the word uh when they when they say that they spotted an appearance of Totoro like he doesn't say oh you know you're just dreaming that's just for little kids you know how they are always making up stories and imaginative friends and stuff like that he's just like yeah i believe you there's spirits around and i feel like i feel like that's not so much a suspense of disbelief but more so i feel like it's also just a cultural thing i I probably shouldn't uh, get into it as deeply as I should just because I don't have, like, enough research to really, like, talk about it. But uh, My Neighbor Totoro, like, plays into, adds, like, themes of, please, if I, like, mispronounce this, animism. Basically, like, the the spiritual way of, like, personifying, like, nature and and all the item objects places and creatures around you have some kind of like spiritual like essence to them so i it it's also really like cool to see i i feel like a lot of uh cultures have have that sense of like spirituality in that way not so much religion but more so like the spiritual awareness of of them like around which i think is really really neat so like the dad he he's just real with it and i think you don't see that a lot in in more western media because it's usually like the parents being being the opposite of that so it was just a really nice change of pace to uh see that i the animation 10 out of 10 of course it's a studio ghibli movie by, directed by, you know, Hayao uh, Miyazaki, of course. Totally, his work, obviously, Chef's Kiss, but also it's good to acknowledge the flaws that he has as a artist and as a father in terms of uh, Studio Ghibli. But there's that. But specifically talking more about uh, moving on to the, uh, the visuals, it's... Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Like, everything you see, literally beautiful. Um, Like, I could stare at it all day. I I feel like, relating to the fact that, you know, I think this film is such a being present at the moment film, I feel like we all resonate with that, just because I feel like we're now living in a world where everything is moving so fast and constant that... Sometimes we just need to take a step back and look at the look at what's in front of us and just like appreciate uh everything around us specifically like the nature around us. Oh, that's where I was getting at. The specific iconic rain scene as all of you may have like known, uh like the bus stop with the two girls and then Totoro right next to them. I think it's such an iconic scene and I understand why it is. So basically the two girls for context, they are waiting for at the bus stop for uh, their dad to give them an umbrella as it's like 
currently raining. And they're waiting su for such a long time. And I really love how they visually show that through, not the even just visuals, but like action, right? So there's the shot of the toad in between, like the girls just like waiting and waiting. And the toad is like, there's a shot of the toad just jumping very slowly. And it, it's just a really good sign of how slow time is passing. I feel like just the little details like that, like, really matter and put emphasis on a specific scene, which I, I really like. And the toad becomes kind of, like, prominent in this scene. Like, he just, the toad just shows up, like, occasionally as the scene happens. And eventually, Totoro shows up. And, and this is before Satsuki meets Totoro. This is their, their initial, like, meeting. So he just eventually just shows up for some reason, but just to, you know, make themselves known. Because uh, like the dad said, these spirits only show up when they want you to see them. So I guess that's that. That's why. And so as Totoro shows up, he's got these long claws. He's scratching his butt. <laughs> Totoro is like the cutest thing. This movie overall is just cute, like wholesome cute. But... You know, Satsuki's like so surprised and he has, Totoro just has like a cute little leaf on his head because, you know, he thinks that, you know, that's a, that'll stop the rain from falling on him. It doesn't, but you know, it's fine. He, he tried his best, <laughs> but Satsuki's really surprised. He's really, she's really happy that she finally gets to see Totoro as May stated and she gives him the umbrella and he has no idea what to do with it because he's he's just a creature of nature right so he doesn't know and that's like the most wholesome thing about it he like opens the umbrella he's like looking at it for a moment and then he holds it up and just he's like okay what now <laughs> right and so these raindrops fall on fall on the umbrella instead of on him and he's like oh he jumps and there's these fun little expressions expressions play such a huge role in this film like I, I love the facial expressions that each character makes but especially Totoro like it just he just they the expressions there just seal the deal right and it just makes it very like comedic and entertaining to you know watch so he has this like really happy smile hearing like the sounds of the raindrops pitter patter against like the the umbrella like he gets like such an enjoyment out of it as he makes this, like, discovery. So he's entertained by it, and then he literally just, like, jumps in the air with a loud thud <laughs> on the ground as more as he tries to make more raindrops fall on the umbrella just for just for the enjoyment, just for funsies. And I think that's really hilarious. So that's... That's that scene in particular. I just love that scene. And then the toad shows up, like, at the end as a little transition. So that was pretty neat. And then the cat bus comes in. The, the cat bus... It, it's so cool. I feel like I should have probably done more research about, like, the um, designs and the purposes of these different kinds of spirits, but the cat bus is really sick. Like, I would, I would definitely take a cat bus to any kind of place I need to go. <laughs> uh, the cat is fluffy and opens the the door whenever they like the cat bus has mouse headlights which is really cool like the design of it is it's really really sick and i suggest you check that out so yeah so i mean by the end of the film basically it's it's just basically the whole movie itself is exploring totoro and the spirits around them as well as like the the fact that they're just waiting for their mom to come home um and trying to get adjusted to school but it's not really as prominent as you know what happens at the end in the middle of it there's also the other iconic scene where they were in the middle of the night the girls f find out that um the acorns that they planted they're growing now because totoro was doing like a little dance with the little other totoros i'm saying totoro a lot <laughs> but it's the cutest thing ever they're doing like a little dance and the girls come out and then this big big tree grows and Totoro is like yeah he, he gets a little Beyblade and he lets it rip and then he gets on the top and he's like okay I guess who just wants who wants to go on a little uh adventure like up in the tree and play a little flute and so the girls do that and it's it's really really cool and really enjoyable to watch I 
it's it's like very nostalgic in that way. I don't know. It's I mean, like obviously nobody has ridden on a Totoro and gone up to a tall tree and played the flute with Totoro. But if you have, good for you. I'd want to know your secret. <laughs> but it it just gives you a sense of like for folks who have who are a child at heart, it it's so nice and so wholesome to like watch, you know, just reliving it it makes you think about reliving that youth, that like innocence, which is really neat. Yeah, and by the end of it, uh the girls find out they get a telegram because it's in the 1950s that they that her mom is staying in the hospital for a little bit because she has a little cold and so both girls start to get worried may starts to may immediately just runs away and then satsuki has to find her and that's when totoro comes in to save the day because he is your local neighborhood totoro (laughs) uh you could argue he is the spider-man of that time (laughs) That'd be cool, uh, Totoro having his own, like, spider suit, (laughs) helping save the day. And so, like, yeah, Satsuki gets into a- into the cat bus again to find Mei, and thankfully they- she finds Mei, and then they go to, uh, the hospital to give her a little gift, um, that Mei had, which was, like, a piece of corn that was grown from Granny. Also, Granny, that's one of the, uh, like, neighbors there. And, uh, yeah. Like, they they don't make themselves known that they're there, so they just drop off the corn, and then they kind of just... I'm, I'm assuming that they do, like, fly off uh, with Totoro or the cat bus to back to the house as the father and mother are still talking. It's so cool that the mom is Leah Salonga, like, the iconic Leah Salonga. As some of you may know, she is an amazing Filipina actress who is also a great singer. Uh, so she uh, sang for, like, Mulan and... I think she also voiced Jasmine from Aladdin. But yeah, yeah. It's overall, My Neighbor Totoro is such a wholesome, loving film just about, you know, enjoying the nature in front of you if you have that privilege of doing that. And it it doesn't necessarily make me want to move to more rural places as someone who doesn't want to be in the middle of nowhere. But it's, it's, really rejuvenating to uh watch a film like Totoro it's like a good palate cleanser if you need it something wholesome to put while you're I don't know doing something in the background or just you know just watching it as in its entirety for what it is and not really having to think about and be stressed about everything like there there's there's charm in simplicity basically so yeah I overall loved My Neighbor Totoro. I am super excited as we are planning to also do a, hopefully a Studio Ghibli, another Studio Ghibli film together with Shay. So yeah, that's, that's my little mini episode review about uh, My Neighbor Totoro. I hope you enjoyed that. As I said before, we will try to have a new episode for season three every month and uh we really appreciate your support and patience again uh please hang in there for folks who are i don't know going through it because i know we both are and it's really important that y'all take care of yourselves so yeah if you all have any other suggestions of any episodes that we should uh any topics that we should bring up in an episode let us know in the comments and yeah this has been a great time recording uh, this little mini episode for you all. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Hope this was a good New Year's present for you all. So yeah, Uh, I'm Kate and this has been the 1224 Podcast mini episode. Hope to see you in a full episode soon. See ya!